Okay. Whoops. I got to press a button. Uh, I'm going to read some poems uh, about my parents and their experiences in the war. Uh, my mother was uh, taken to Germany when she was 19 years old to be a slave laborer. And uh, she spent the next three years in Germany as, as a slave laborer. And my, my dad was taken in 1940 and spent five years in Buchenwald. And um, uh, after the war, they spent another six years in refugee camps in Germany because there was no place who, that wanted to take refugees. Uh, so they spent six years there. And uh, that's, that's where I was born in, in one of those refugee camps. Uh, I'm gonna read a couple of poems about my, my mom and a couple of poems about, about my dad. And then I'll, I'll finish off with a general poem about war. <clears throat> uh, the, the first poem I wanna read is called, uh, My Mother Was 19. And it's about the day the German soldiers came to her, to her house in, uh, in what's now uh, the Ukraine. She was, uh, she was living in uh, Eastern Poland and, uh, and during the war, it was taken over by the Russians and, uh, and uh, became a part of Russia. But uh, my poem's called, My Mother Was 19. Soldiers from nowhere came to my mother's farm killed her sister's baby with their heels, shot my grandmother too. Shot her one time in the neck, then for kicks in the face lots of times. They saw my mother, they didn't care she was a virgin dressed in a blue dress with tiny white flowers. They raped her so she couldn't stand up, couldn't lie down, couldn't talk. They broke her teeth when they shoved her dress into her mouth. If they had had a camera, they would have taken her picture and sent it to her. That's the kind of men they were. This is what she said about all this years later after the war. She said, let me tell you, God doesn't give you any favors. He doesn't say, now you've seen this bad thing, but tomorrow, You'll see this good thing, and when you see it, you'll be smiling. That's bullshit. Uh, I'm gonna read another poem about my mom. It's called, it's called uh, What the War Taught Her. What the War Taught My Mother. My mother learned that sex is bad. Men are worthless. It is always cold and there is never enough to eat. She learned that if you are stupid with your hands, you will not survive the winter, even if you survive the fall. She learned that only the young people survive the camps. The old ones are left in piles like worthless paper and babies are scarce like chickens and bread. My mother learned that the world is a broken place where no birds sing and even angels cannot bear the sorrows God gives them. She learned that you don't pray your enemies will not torment you. You only pray that they won't kill you. Uh, I'm gonna read a couple of poems about my dad. Uh, when my dad was finally liberated in 1945 by the Americans, he weighed 70 pounds. Um, uh, I, one time I was doing, a, I do, do a lot of presentations, and I always ask the people in the audience if anybody weighs 70 pounds. And one time I was, I was doing a presentation at a middle school, and there was a one girl who had been double promoted, she was like, I don't know, 11 years old, and she weighed 70 pounds. <laughs> and she was, I've never met, you know, and, uh, anyway, my dad weighed 70 pounds. Uh, and I, I, I would ask him, I would say, uh, I would say, how did you survive? How did you survive? Because you'd only get about 600 calories of food a day. Uh, and one time my father complained about the food and how he was starving. And uh, 
a guard took a club and clubbed him unconscious. Uh, so this is a poem about what my father ate. My father ate what he couldn't eat, what his mother taught him not to, brown grass, small chips of wood, the dirt beneath his gray dark fingernails. He ate the leaves off trees, he ate bark, he ate the flies that tormented the mules in the fields. He ate what would kill a man in the normal course of his life. Leather buttons, cloth caps, anything small enough to get into his mouth. My father ate roots and he ate newspaper. In his cl slow, clumsy hunger, my dad did what the birds did. He picked for oats or corn or any kind of seed left in the dry shit by the cows. And when there was nothing to eat, he would search the ground for pebbles and he would loosen his saliva and he would swallow that. And all the other men did the same. Yeah, every year about uh, one out of four people died from starvation or uh, brutality in the camps. Uh, it's a poem called, next poem is a poem called, What My Father Knows About Killing. My father knew that men and animals did not die the same way. A man would kill a horse or a cow or a pig with respect he would never show a man. Killing a pig, a man would steady it, prepare it for that single killing blow, work to make its suffering quick, if not instant. A poised hammer ready to strike down in such a way the pig wouldn't see it or hear it, would hardly feel it on the back of his head in that one sure spot that would cut it and, excuse me, that would kill it before it knew it. My father knew that that wasn't the way men killed each other. He had seen men crucified and hung, castrated and frozen to death, women raped and beaten and shot, their breasts torn apart by bayonets, their babies torn and scattered in the air like sand. My father said that suffering was the sauce we reserve for men and women. Um, the last poem I'm going to read is a poem called War and Peace. And I wrote the poem in response to a poem written by a Polish uh, Nobel Prize winning poet, uh, Wisława Zimborska. She wrote a poem called the end and the beginning about the end of a war and the, and the way and what happens at the end of the war, you know, that something new begins, some kind of peace comes to life. And uh, my poem is called War and Peace. And it's a response to uh, Zimborska's poem. War and Peace. War will kill you and leave you cold in the street or in the fields broken in the rubble of bombed buildings. Excuse me, um, broken in the rubble of bombed buildings. But don't worry, peace will come and bury you and sit over you weeping like your mother, praying for you, pleading for your return. She'll whisper to you like when you were a little boy in the stream washing your hands and face before breakfast. She will weep until God brings a miracle, you risen again in golden rays and singing birds. And then war will return and kill you. Thank you.